Anyway, our first speaker this morning, um, Paul Kelly, Chief Executive of Fall to Ireland. Paul, of course, wants to build on the successful tourism campaigns that we've already had, such as the Wild Atlantic Way, the Gathering, and Ireland's Ancient East. His job is to make sure that Ireland is best positioned to generate the jobs and the revenue and increase uh, economic contribution uh, in as far as, as it can for the whole country. Paul's from Wexford, at least that's where he was born, a highly experienced marketing professional and manager who's worked at senior level for Diageo, Aviva, and the UCD Market Business School. So would you please welcome Paul Kent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Olivia. Thank you, Margaret, for, for the kind invitation. It's fabulous uh, to, uh, to be here in Killarney. I'd like to thank the, uh, uh, the organizing uh, committee for, for putting together this conference, and also thank Great Southern for, uh, for the fabulous hosting and hospitality, as always. So uh, great to be here, and uh, I'm going to um, talk you through a few of the things. I suppose as, as we gather here, it's been kind of summarized uh, already, but just quickly to reflect on it. You know, as we gather here, we're coming towards the end of what has you know what has been the best year ever for Irish tourism in terms of then I'll show you some of some of the projections for year end in terms of numbers growth and, uh, and revenue growth etc. So you know uh, a lot to be positive about a lot to be a lot to be optimistic about. Uh, we do you know we are it's probably a bit of a mixed bag because we're all facing into and particularly you know the industry obviously are facing into uh, the VAT increase and the challenges that that's going to have. Uh, both the challenges that's going to have around commercial, you know, commercial viability and commercial sustainability, the challenges that's going to have for us as a nation on, on the implications of value for money. It, we're very much aware that it comes at the time where it's not the only uh, cost pressure that's increasing in the business, that there is cost pressures on wages, there is cost pressure on insurance, there's cost pressures on utilities. So there is kind of a, a, you know, that, that cost pressure building that I think is something that, 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 we, that is, you know, in terms of that the industry will need to manage going forward and we will look to help and support it as much as possible in, in that regard. There is obviously that big challenge of Brexit and the implications of that as well. So, you know, I think as, as we gather here, there is that mixed bag of there, there is a, a lot. We're, we're starting today in, in, in a very good place uh, in terms of the, the place we're starting from, uh, but in terms of there is challenges ahead, but there's also grounds for optimism and lots of grounds for optimism ahead. But let's just look at, at kind of, um, where we are, um, uh, first of all, uh, this is our, our uh, projection towards uh, the end of 2018. We're kind of close enough to the end of the year that we can kind of call the exit polls now, as, as they would say in election terms. So we're looking at, we're projecting a revenue growth of about 8% for the year in total, uh, with, um, you know, with uh, now up to 7.8 billion. Overseas visitors up around 7%, domestic and Northern Ireland visitors up around 2%. Um, employment uh, up around eight percent. It's you know we're 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 re we're currently crunching and checking the numbers on that. It is going to be north of two hundred and forty thousand, uh, probably quite a bit north of that. It's going to be our employment estimate. We're we're finalising those numbers as as, as we speak. Uh, and exchequer returns up by about eight percent as well. And so lots of uh, lots of great growth uh, this year. They're from, they're phenomenal figures. I don't think we can continue to grow at that kind of rate, um, uh, you know, but certainly there is, uh, there is lots of, there is lots of you know, potential future growth and we're, we, we'll, be, we'll be sharing some of our projections on that at our plans launch. Uh, get, I'll get our ad in early for our, uh, we're, we're launching our own uh, plans for 20, 2019 uh, on Monday up in Crow Park. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll be putting some of our early projections for 2019 out, uh, out then, which we're finalizing at the moment. Um, in terms then of looking forward and building on that, uh, and how do we take, how do we build on that success and, and take advantage of the opportunities that are out there, but also meet the challenges and address the challenges. This is this is a slide that some of you may have seen before, and uh, those of you who come to this conference will see again and again. Uh, we make no apologies for that. It is our overall approach within Fall Ireland to building Irish tourism, and I'm going to talk you through it. But effectively. This is kind of what we're looking for, what to have is kind of a clear, consistent, and comprehensive strategic approach to this. So the, the analogy we use is that we're kind of looking at it as if we're building a house. Our two key strategies, if you, you know, our levers for growth, our cranes as it were, are regionality and seasonality. Um, and they are the, 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 what we believe as being the two key mechanisms 
that we really need to work on to drive sustainable growth in Irish tourism. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about those today. Obviously, everything we do, we do under, under what we call the roof of our brand architecture. And obviously, at the top of that roof, we have the overall brand Ireland, uh, which is the brand of Tourism Ireland market. It's internationally uh, under with uh, both ourselves, uh, within Fort Ireland, and also um, uh, towards the Nor Northern Ireland offering, for, towards the Northern Ireland work with them on. And then underneath that, within, within Ireland, we have obviously our four regional experience brands of the Wild Atlantic Way, Ireland's Ancient East, Dublin, and Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. And then our fifth brand is our business brand, Meet in Ireland, uh, that we market all of our, our, uh, our business offering to the, uh, to the business tourism market internationally, which is a different market and therefore a need, has different needs, and therefore we kind of need a different, a different brand offering there. So, so on the, the, everything we do now, and we have the entire country covered with one of those brands. So there's a mechanism through that brand architecture for everyone uh, to grow their businesses. Then we have, uh, underneath that, we have the six building blocks. And these are, if you like, kind of the six, the six areas where we need to have a strong, robust, resilient uh, house of Irish tourism, as it were. We need each of these blocks to be really solid. Uh, we can't have weakness in any one of these blocks, and we need these blocks to interconnect and work well together. The top three bots are all about demand drivers. They're all about sales and marketing. So whether that's sales and marketing to domestic and Northern Ireland visitors for the, for the business in Ireland, which we in Fulge Ireland look after, the work we do uh, with, uh, with tourism in Ireland in terms of the international sales and marketing of Ireland, obviously another key building block and all the work tourism Ireland do there. Then we have our, our sales and marketing for business and, and uh, 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 business and events. Um, Conference, which once again we in Fulge Ireland uh, take the lead on, but work obviously with our colleagues in Tourism Ireland, Tourism Northern Ireland under the Meet in Ireland brand. So, if you like, those three blocks at the top, there are our demand drivers, and then they're supported by the three blocks at the bottom, which are our supply side. So, we need to have brilliant visitor experiences, and this is probably the most important thing, you know, in terms of the, that we need to have because this is what people will travel for. So, what is it? A, a, what is it that people will will see and do? And this is an area where you know, in terms of we need to keep getting better. Our competitors are out there all the time investing and growing and improving the visitor experience. The range of things that you can now do, the range of things that you can now see as, a, as an international traveler are phenomenal around the world to fill many, many lifetimes. Uh, and, you know, so we need to keep getting better. We need to keep investing in, in those visitor experiences. And we need to invest them in a way that will spread the benefit around the country. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, then obviously a world-class industry. We have, we're lucky enough, and, and thanks to the work of so many people in this room and so many of your predecessors, we're, we're, we're lucky to have a really world-class industry in Ireland that has got a fantastic reputation internationally. But once again, we can't rest on our laurels. We need to keep, we need to keep sharpening that. We need to keep getting better. We need to make sure that that, that industry is, is, has got the, the capacity, the capability, the labor supply, the competitiveness, and the quality standards to keep getting better. Um, uh, so, uh, and that's an area that we in Fulcher Ireland work, work to support that development of world class industry. Uh, the, 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 the final building block, then, if you like, is, is around kind of having a visitor friendly infrastructure and community. And this is about making sure that all those things that aren't necessarily designed or built predominantly for the consumer, but for the visitor, need to be there or the visitor experience won't be built. So whether that is infrastructure, things like the roads, the broadband technology, uh, you know, in terms of those core things that just need to be there and need to be there in a way that work for visitors. And also then the community and making sure that we continue uh, having a really welcoming <laughs> community here in Ireland where, uh, you know, where people are really welcoming of, of visitors. And, and I think nowhere better than Killarney uh, to, um, um, uh, to do that, if we could get you know, kind of all of the communities around Ireland to be as welcoming of visitors as, as the community is here in Killarney, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, and we want to keep building on that. And obviously, as as, as tourism grows, there you know, and, and we we've all seen the stories from some international cities and, and places where you know that can become an issue. Uh, so as tourism grows, we need to make sure it's grown in a way that that we that we keep the community on board and keep keep local residents on board. Then, of course, we have our foundations. No house can be built without solid foundations. And the key foundations that we said, the three key ones that we really want to pull out is research and insights. We want everything we do, both within Fulge and everything we, 
we bring to the industry to be informed by, uh, by world-class research, by really good evidence, evidence-based thinking, and by really good insights into what do visitors, what do visitors need and what do visitors want. So really important foundation. Secondly, then obviously environmental sustainability, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in, in a few minutes. Um, that we that everything we do, we do in an environmentally sustainable way. Uh, once again, really important, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then the third area is tourism coordination structures, and this is about a collaborative way of working, and, and you know. Uh, that, that is essential. There are so many stakeholders that need to work together to, to develop tourism to its optimum and to grow. There are, you know, the, 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 as well as all of the industry stakeholders, the organs of state that need to be there. The local authority, obviously the tourism agencies, Tourism Ireland ourselves, the local authorities, the Office of Public Works who own so many of the tourism assets, the National Parks and Wildlife Service, Quilcha who own so much land around the country. Uh, Waterways Ireland, uh, the National Museums, the, 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 the myriad of stakeholders that all need to work together uh, is phenomenal to, to provide the best tourism offering for Ireland and to develop, to develop the tourism offering in Ireland to its optimum is it, it, phenomenal. So, and we now have, at a national level, we have the Tourism Leadership Group, uh, which Minister Griffin and Minister Ross chair, uh, and that kind of operates at a national level and puts that strategy in place. And now what we've built to support that over the last uh, year to 18 months is have regional tourism structures that have got all those stakeholders uh, and the key stakeholders. And so we have one for Dublin, we have one for uh, Wild Atlantic Way, we have one for Ireland's Ancient East, and we've now got one for Ireland's Hidden Heartlands as well. So we pull those regional stakeholders together to develop tourism in, in, in those regions. Um, and I think they're going to be really powerful. And then obviously those regional structures connect into lots and lots of local structures at, uh, and local tourism groups uh, at, the, at, the, at the town and county level. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, I'm not going to go through all of that detail, I'm going to talk about our two key uh, sustainable strategies, which is regionality and seasonality. First one is regionality. On the left here, we have the map of, uh, we have the map of tourism in Ireland, uh, which is, uh, this is the, how tourism is currently dispersed around Ireland. And it's approximately, uh, and as you can see, the red spots are where the action is, and it's approximately 80% um, of the overseas bed nights are still located in about five counties. So great news for Kerry, great news for Cork, great news for Clare, go all the way to Dublin, but there's lots of blue on this map. There's lots of areas where, where we still have tremendous landscapes, tremendous history, uh, but not really leveraged for tourism yet. So. We believe that the map on the right, if we look at it, the potential is where this can get to in terms of increased regional dispersion. And as you can see, it is, uh, it, is a much, it is a much wider spread of tourism activity. And also you'll see in that that obviously there are areas that have got probably potential to grow faster and for tourism to be a bigger part of that economy than other areas. But we believe that there are growth, there's growth opportunities for everywhere. Don't think everywhere won't grow at the same rate, uh, but we think that there is good growth opportunities for, for everyone in the country. So that's, that, that, that's something like over the next decade or so that, uh, that we believe that, that the tourism map can look at if we take, can look like if we take the right actions. So what are those actions? What are the things we can do to promote that regional dispersion? Uh, first of all, obviously our regional experience brands. Um, and because uh, we now have experienced brands, we've seen the success of the Wild Atlantic Way, we're now seeing the success of Ireland's ancient East. So we're seeing the power of those regional experienced brands have been able to grow the entire region and, and not just little pockets. Uh, our capital investment program, uh, once again in our session on, 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 on Monday, Co Park, there is, for anyone who is interested in the afternoon, we're doing a very detailed briefing of all of the capital investment going on. Uh, we have uh, about 300 million uh, in the National Development Plan that's going to be invested uh, through Fall Jar. And we're also trying to leverage that money to bring more money in from areas like Department of Rural Affairs, Urban Regeneration, uh, OPW, various other capital funds. But through all that capital investment, we're bearing in mind that regional dispersion and that, that ability of where, how we can build out, um, how we can build product experiences and attractions, and open up parts of the countryside uh, that will help build up that spread of tourism. So that regional dispersion lens is a hugely important thing in, in our capital investment in our capital investment program. 
Uh, the, the other one is what we call visitor experience development plans. And these are effectively long-term plans done at local level. Uh, and um, here, here in Kerry, on the Skellix Coast, we've got a Kellix Coast visitor experience development plan, which is one of the one of the early ones we did, which really got all of the uh, all of the local stakeholders to work together on how can we build out the tourism experience, the visitor experience that they have in this area, so that the, so that the visitors will stay longer, spend more, and have a richer experience in this area. We now have uh, we now have nine of those going around the country, and we're going to add more next year. Um, uh, and that's working with all of the stakeholders at local level on kind of a five-year development plan for that region uh, that, uh, that can help grow, grow that region. So, and once again, we're focusing those based on where we can drive further regional dispersion. Uh, our marketing activity within Fulcher Ireland, we market to, obviously, to the domestic market and to Northern Ireland. And we're once again, that regional lens of where we can drive that regional dispersion, you'll see featured in the areas that we're, we're proportionately marked allocating our marketing budget to drive that regional dispersion and, and introduce people to areas that they wouldn't have traditionally thought of. Um, and then of course international publicity. So we in Ireland have, we have a fantastic footprint of international publicity. The teams in Tourism Ireland have great relationships with journalists, uh, in the right journalists in, 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 in countries all around the world and they invite those journalists to Ireland and then the team in Folge Ireland who you know who got kind of underground product experience look after the hosting of those journalists and make sure that they're seeing the right product and experience and being introduced to new products as they come on stream etc and and they'll, those journalists then go and right mark will have the number more to head than i will but you know uh, i think it's almost 100 million mark is it 100 million of free advertising space effectively uh, that ireland gets in really influential travel journalism but well, so once again we use that tool use those fan trips uh, to bring those journalists to regions that they wouldn't necessarily thought to try and drive that regional dispersion. So that regional dispersion is, is going through all of those activities. And none of them are silver bullets and none of them are going to transfer it over, are going to transform it overnight. But through working on all of them uh, over you know over the next five or ten years we believe we really can kind of move that dial. Uh, just in terms of our regional experience brands, uh, that's the map of the country. Um, if uh, in terms of to say, look at that, that everywhere is now covered. Uh, obviously, just that with, with given, given where we are, we have the Wild Atlantic Way has traditionally been kind of very much focused on on just the coast of the Wild Atlantic Way, and it is really important that we don't confuse consumers and we still say, look, you know, the Wild Atlantic Way is the coast, but we're looking how do we leverage the proximity to the coast. For, this, for all of West of Ireland. So um, here in Killarney, for example, it's one of the pilot towns to be a gateway to the Wild Atlantic Way. Uh, and we're gonna be looking at the same in, in Limerick and then we're looking at how we roll out those gateway towns. Looped drives is another key mechanism and those visitor experience development plans we talked about. So we've got a number of mechanisms to leverage the Wild Atlantic Way to work as being a really powerful driver of tourism in, in all of the blue area on that map. And obviously, the, the yellowish areas are Ireland's ancient east, and the green is Ireland's ancient heartlands, and then we have, and then we have Dublin in, in the purple. Um, looking at moving on from regionality to seasonality, uh, now just to explain this chart, um, we have the months across the bottom. We have the percentage of annual, the percentage of the annual visitor arrival in that month on on the side. So the amount of the percentage, not the total amount, the percentage that arrive in, in that month. The blue line is where we currently are, and as you can see, a big peak in May, June, July, August, September, and then fairly short, uh, fairly small either side. That's not too dissimilar from uh, from a lot of kind of global global trends and different places where the peaks at different times of the year. Um, but the orange line is where we believe over the next ten years that it can get to. And if you look at that, it doesn't mean that we have less people coming in the summer. We have a smaller percentage of people coming in the summer because we want more percentage of people coming in February, March, April, and in October, November. And this is really important to kind of flatten out that curve a little bit um, so that we can, uh, we can get that seasonal, uh, we can get that, that sustainable, more sustainable seasonal, seasonal business. And those small percentage shifts can make a big difference in terms of, in terms of business being able to operate an open year round uh, and being able to, to provide employment opportunities for people on, on, on a year-round basis and therefore entice more people into the industry. So how are we going to do that? Uh, business tourism, 
it is a great thing because it's counter, it's counter summer peak season, you know, in terms of people don't want to run their conferences and their corporate meetings in the summer because their staff are on holidays. So it's great for the off season. So we're going to be investing more and driving further on, on business tourism. Our, our tour operators working with, with the international tour operators and giving them itineraries that work in the off season, making them uh, aware of where it's open, where there's good things to do, etc. is a big part of it. Once again, our domestic marketing, as well as focusing in developing regions, we really focus in the shoulder seasons. Our, our domestic marketing to, uh, to Ireland and Northern Ireland visitors is really all about trying to drive short breaks in the shoulder season uh, to help fill that capacity that's there, that opportunity that's there. Festivals and events, you know, our focus uh, is really on trying to move more and more of the festival. We fund between three and four million a year in festival grants. Uh, you know, and we make no apologies for saying, look, we, we're, we're, we do need to reduce uh, and have festivals that run in peak season, in key hotspots, need to become more self-sufficient, and we need to liberate the state's investment from those so that we can invest in festivals in the shoulder season and in developing areas. And that's very much kind of how another mechanism that we can use to drive that seasonality. You've got um, five minutes. Before. I'm almost done. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> and finally then, uh, on this one, our visitor experience development plans. Once again, those, those teams that work in those local areas and those long-term plans work with those product, with those the cluster of industry and say, right, how can we work together to stay open an, an extra two weeks this season? And how can we coordinate our activity? And sometimes that is things like, you know, re one restaurant will open on a Monday night, another restaurant will open on a Tuesday night, another restaurant will open on a Wednesday night, and they'll all open from Thursday night on. And it's coming to those kind of agreements so that there's enough going on in the towns because for, for, for season extension to work, a town has got to work together on it. A town has got to say, there's no point in one business being open and other businesses not being open. There's no point in people coming to a hotel and then having nothing to do during the day in that area. So everyone's got, got to work together on that. So we did that through the visitor experience development plans. Uh, so um, in terms of coming back then to our house, I've talked about regionality, seasonality. I'm not going to go through the, uh, the building blocks here because I only have five minutes. But to find out, once again, another ad, to find out what we're doing in each, each of these building blocks for 2019, we'll be unveiling that on Monday at our, at our event at Grove Park. The key foundations, given that we're all about sustainable strategies here, I just want to focus for the purposes of today on environmental sustainability and how we in Fulch Ireland approach it. First of all, we have our vice framework. Um, and, um, and, and this isn't, this isn't, uh, this isn't, this isn't kind of uh, Miami vice or Las Vegas vice type stuff. What we stand for is visitor, industry, community, and environment. And everything we do uh, with Info Ireland, we look at through those lens of the visitor, the industry, the community, and the environment. And it needs to work, and anything we do to grow tourism needs to work on all of those four models. And that's kind of a global best practice model for, uh, for sustainable growth in tourism. So that's, that's a framework we apply to everything. Um, Planning Commission, Fulch Ireland are a prescribed body under Planning Commission, and, and that means that we literally look at thousands and thousands of Planning Commission applications that are forwarded to us by local authorities every year to look at how is this going to impact on the tourism development in that area, and how, you know, is there anything going on here that's going to make the tourism amenity in that area less attractive or less powerful uh, that, that kind of could be, or is there anything going on that's going to damage the environment and therefore hurt the tourism industry? Uh, so that's that we, we have a, we have a team of people who are very busy looking at looking at, at that stuff and making sure that that we protect the country in that regards. Uh, environmental impact assessment, uh, the Wild Atlantic Way, for example, we do environmental impact assessment on an ongoing basis upon the entire over the entire uh, route of the Wild Atlantic Way, two and a half thousand kilometres, and that's making sure that as the tourism grows and develops in that area, that we monitor, measure. The measure the environmental impact and take any actions and make sure any actions are taken that need to be taken. So we keep a very, very close eye on, on that through that ongoing uh, environmental impact assessment. Uh, I've spoken about regionality and seasonality and obviously, you know, for environmental sustainability, spreading, uh, spreading the area that people visit and spreading the seasons they visit over uh, is, is a key element of growing in an environmentally sustainable way. I won't go back to the detail of that. And then, of course, sharing best practice with industry. So, <coughs> excuse me, we're out there trying to understand what is the best practice out there in the world, 
uh, one of the things that, that, that we can do that we're not yet doing, and then try to learn about that best practice and then share it uh, throughout the industry. And this is an area where we're going to dial up even more going forward uh, in terms of what we want to do on environmental sustainability. And, uh, so that's me. Um, I promised Olivia I'd finish within time. <laughs> uh, so just say thank you very much uh, for, uh, um, uh, for your attention. I know we're going to have a Q&A panel a little bit later, so if there's any questions, we can take them there. Thank you very much.